the ancient world was likely filled with a mishmash of archaic humans, including proto-Neanderthals and proto-Sapiens, with their numbers waxing and waning between ancient ice ages that arrived every hundred thousand years or so. To be honest, the world resembled Game of Thrones. There were a few dispersed populations, some related, some not, that emigrated or became extinct over time. And winter was always on its way. If there was some horrific natural disaster, such as an extreme ice age, that caused this split, then the ancient survivors would have to be absolute monsters to endure. They would have had to resort to cannibalism and had an animalistic ferocity to survive. We are the descendants of those ancient people. The earliest known fossils of our species, Homo sapiens, have been discovered at an archaeological site in Morocco. The human remains and stone tools discovered at the site date from 350,000 to 280,000 years ago. This new fossil evidence pushes back the earliest Homo sapiens lineage examples by more than 100,000 years. Was the proto-Neanderthal from Spain and the proto-sapiens of Morocco descended from a common ancestor? We can only speculate, but crossing the narrow strait of Gibraltar was within the capabilities of humans around half a million years ago judging by evidence of archaic humans from remote islands in the Mediterranean and elsewhere. The distance is only 1,500 kilometers, only about a 30 days walk and a short sea crossing. The discoveries, made in Morocco's Jebel Erhoud, helped to fill in the gaps in our species fossil record, and may prompt scientists to reconsider their theories about human evolution in Africa. These discoveries are currently the oldest association of possible early Homo sapiens lineage members and Middle Stone Age tools. They elevate Morocco from a supposed backwater in our species' evolution to a prominent position. The first fossils were discovered in Jebel Erhoud in the 1960s, but their age was originally estimated to be around 40,000 years ago. Because these fossils did not fit into any existing theories of human origins at the time, they were regarded as a curiosity. Later research in the 1990s determined that the bones were between 200,000 and 100,000 years old. However, new research led by researchers from Germany's Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology revealed that these fossils are even older. More human fossils were later discovered at the site, including a partial skull and a lower jaw, as well as stone tools discovered alongside the bones. The tools were aged between 350,000 and 280,000 years old using a technique known as thermoluminescence dating. Meanwhile, new research has shifted the estimated age of a previously discovered fossil tooth from around 160,000 to around 318,000 to 254,000 years old, putting it in the same time frame as the tools. The researchers compared the shape of the Erhoud fossil skull faces to those of Neanderthals and other early and recent human relatives. Their research revealed that the Jebel Erhoud specimens resembled modern Homo sapiens the most on the face. The skulls, as early examples of the Homo sapiens lineage, exhibit a mix of modern and archaic human features. The Jebel Erhoud fossils have some primitive characteristics, such as a longer, lower brain case, strong brow ridges and a large face and teeth, as one would expect from a 300,000-year-old creature. But the delicate cheekbones and retracted face, as well as details of the skulls and teeth, and the shape of the jawbones, appear more modern. Nobody knows when Homo sapiens evolved from same ancestors of the Neanderthals. Indeed, current evidence from fossils and DNA indicates that the modern human and Neanderthal lineages split at least 500,000 years ago. As a result, we should be able to find early examples of both lineages. What's more, early Neanderthal fossils dating to around 430,000 years ago have been discovered at the Pit of the Bones site in Spain, but the earliest fossils discovered that look anatomically similar to modern humans date from around 200,000 years ago, and are from Omo Kaibish in Ethiopia. Anthropologists are unsure how the Jebel Erhoud fossil material fits into the larger picture of Homo sapiens evolution in Africa but it adds to the complex picture of different human forms and lineages coexisting on the continent. Different protosapiens populations, as well as surviving examples of the more ancient lineages of Homo heidelbergensis, also classified as Homo rhodesiensis or Homo bedensis, in Central Africa, are thought to have existed around 300,000 years ago. As a result, there is a significant gap in the story of how the Homo sapiens lineage evolved, which the Jebel Erhoud research helps to fill. 
therefore, other fossil discoveries may need to be revisited. Truth be told, the African fossil record for Homo sapiens is lacking, compared to evidence from Eurasia. It is possible that earlier and neglected fossils from Morocco and Tanzania are even older members of our Homo sapiens species. As more examples of the early Homo sapiens lineage are discovered, the anatomically archaic modern divide is likely to close. Many scientists consider La Ferrisi I to be the classic example of Neanderthal anatomy. His leg and foot bones demonstrated unequivocally that Neanderthals walked upright and with a gait similar to modern humans. La Ferrisi is an adult male Neanderthal skeleton, is one of the most important individuals discovered. His skull, the largest and most complete Neanderthal skull ever discovered, exhibits many typical Neanderthal characteristics, such as a low, sloping forehead and a large nasal opening. His teeth, which have all been preserved, are heavily worn, indicating that he was older when he died. His front incisors have slanted wear that does not result from chewing. One theory to explain this unusual wear on his teeth is that he habitually held something between his front teeth, such as a hide, which he then scraped with a tool. Although this hypothesis is debatable, the use of teeth as tools may represent an extraordinary Neanderthal behavioral adaptation. This refuted French paleontologist Pierre Marcel Lin Boulet's earlier reconstruction of the La Chapel Auxiliary Saints, Neanderthal skeleton, which depicted this species as hunched, brutish creatures. The Cima de los Husos hominin, previously thought to be a member of the Homo heidelbergensis ancient human species, is now thought to be an early member of the Neanderthal lineage. According to scientists, the Cima de los Husos hominin is a proto-Neanderthal. In fact, the appearance of Neanderthals has been linked to extreme Arctic conditions during the Ice Ages. However, the Spanish cave site 430,000 years ago was only slightly cooler and drier than it is today. Thus, if the Cima's ancestors were isolated from other early humans, their unique Neanderthal facial features could have evolved randomly through genetic drift and become fixed in the population. Archaic humans split off from other groups living in Africa and East Asia 500,000 to 400,000 years ago, during the Middle Pleistocene, eventually settling in Eurasia and evolving characteristics that would come to define the Neanderthal lineage. Modern humans arrived in Eurasia several hundred thousand years later, possibly from Africa. They interbred with Neanderthals, but showed signs of reproductive incompatibility even then. As a result, modern humans eventually displaced Neanderthals. Scientists have been surprised by the degree of divergence between Neanderthals and modern humans in such a short period of time. Why did Neanderthals diverge from other early hominins so quickly? What kind of evolution did Neanderthals go through? To answer these questions, scientists needed an accurate picture of European populations around 400,000 years ago, when the Neanderthal lineage was in its early stages. This has been difficult because the European fossil record, which is an important tool for answering these questions, is isolated and dispersed, consisting of remains from different timelines. However, samples from the Cima de los Husos site in Atapuerca, Spain, differ from other specimens. The extraordinary and unprecedented accumulation of hominin fossils at Cima de los Husos makes it unique. Nothing quite so large has ever been discovered for any extinct hominin species, including Neanderthals. Since 1984, this site has been excavated continuously. Archaeologists have recovered nearly 7,000 human fossils after 30 years, corresponding to all skeletal regions of at least 28 individuals. This remarkable collection contains 17 fragmentary skulls, many of which are quite complete. These skulls are from a single population of the Cima de los Husos hominin, a fossil hominin species. Some have been studied before, but seven are presented for the first time in a recent study, and six are more complete than ever before. With these intact samples at their disposal, the anthropologists made strides in characterizing distinguishing features. Their work has contributed to the resolution of hypotheses about Neanderthal evolution, specifically the accretion model hypothesis, which proposes that Neanderthals evolved their distinguishing features over time rather than in a single linear sweep. The nature of the evolutionary process that gave rise to Neanderthals has been debated for decades. An important question in these debates was whether the Neanderthalization process affected all regions of the skull from the start, or if there were different stages in this process that affected different parts of the skull at different times. 
the researchers' skull samples revealed Neanderthal features in the face and teeth, but not elsewhere. For example, the nearby brain case retained features associated with more primitive hominins. Scientists think the Cima de los Husos hominins were part of the Neanderthal clade, though not necessarily direct ancestors to the classic Neanderthals. The Cima de los Husos hominin is related to Neanderthals, but is more primitive than the later Pleistocene variety. Many of the Neanderthal-derived features observed by the researchers were related to mastication, or chewing. It appears that these changes were caused by an increased use of the frontal teeth. The incisors show significant wear, as if they were used as a third hand, which is typical of Neanderthals. According to the findings, facial modification was the first step in Neanderthal evolution. This mosaic pattern corresponds to the accretion model's prediction. One thing that is striking about the skulls studied was how similar the different individuals were. Other fossils from the same geological period are unique and do not fit the pattern. This indicates that there was a lot of diversity among different populations during the Middle Pleistocene. Indeed, other European Middle Pleistocene hominids do not have the same array of Neanderthal-derived characteristics as this fossil group. Thus, multiple evolutionary lineages appear to have coexisted in Europe during the Middle Pleistocene, with the Cima de los Husos sample being closer to Homo neanderthalensis. What do you think? Are these fossils from Morocco and Spain related? Contrary to how it is often portrayed, Europe was not like Hotel California, where you could check out but never leave. Hominids were coming and going from Africa for many hundreds of thousands of years, no passport required.